Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In our last video, we manually configured static IP addresses for our PCs. But what if we had a larger network with dozens or even hundreds of devices? Assigning IPs one by one would be a nightmare. That's where DHCP Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol comes in. DHCP allows devices to automatically get IP addresses, saving time and reducing errors. Today, we're going to set up a DHCP server on our router to assign IPs to multiple PCs in two different networks. We'll be using the same setup as before, but I've added a few more PCs for a niche network to better demonstrate how DHCP works. So let's jump right into it and get started. Before setting up our DHCP server, let's first check if any DHCP pools already exist on this router. To do that, we use the command If there were any DHCP pools configured, we'll see details like the pool name, total addresses, and how many have been assigned. But as you can see, nothing shows up, meaning there are no DHCP pools currently configured. Since our router isn't running DHCP server yet, we'll set one up now to automatically assign IP addresses to devices in our network. Let's get started. Now, let's go to one of our PCs and switch its IP configuration from static to DHCP so it can request an IP address from a DHCP server. But since we haven't set a DHCP on the router yet, let's see what happens. Since there's no active DHCP server, it fails to get an address. Instead of getting an IP on our network, it ends up with an address in the 169254 range. This is called automatic private IP addressing. So the automatic private IP addressing is a fallback mechanism used by Windows and other operating system when a DHCP server is unreachable. It allows devices to communicate only within the same range, but not with other networks or the internet. Before we configure the DHCP server, let's quickly review our router setup. We already have two interfaces configured, each acting as the default gateway for its respective network. Here you can see that G0-0 is assigned to 10101, which serves as the default gateway for the 10100-24 network. Meanwhile, G01 is set to 10201 serving the 10200-24 network. Each of these interfaces will act as the default gateway for the PCs in their respective networks, allowing them to communicate with the router and other networks. So before setting up our DHCP pools, we need to exclude certain IP addresses from being assigned to devices. This is done using the IP DHCP excluded address command. In our case, we need to exclude the default gateway IPs because they are already assigned to the router and should not be given to other devices. So this tells the router not to assign 10101 and 10201 to any device via DHCP. If we didn't exclude these addresses, a PC could accidentally receive the same IP as the router's interface, causing an IP conflict and breaking network connectivity. Now that we've reserved these addresses, we can now move on to creating our DHCP pools. We'll be setting up a DHCP pool named DHCP1 for the 10100-24 network. We create our DHCP pool with the command IP DHCP pool DHCP1. This creates a new DHCP pool named DHCP1. Now we need to specify the network and subnet mask that this pool will assign addresses from. Network. 10100255255250. Next, we define the default gateway, which is the router's interface that devices in this network will use to reach other networks. Default router 10101. 
And finally, we set up a DNS server to allow devices to resolve domain names. We'll use the Google's public DNS server at 8844. So this command shows us which IP addresses have been assigned to devices along with their MAC address and lease expiration times. As you can see, the router has already leased an IP to a device, most likely the first PC we set to DHCP mode. This means our DHCP server is working correctly and handling out addresses. Let's take a closer look at the DHCP lease. When a device gets an IP from a DHCP, it's not permanent. Instead, it is leased for a certain amount of time. This ensures that, that unused IPs get reassigned when devices disconnect or leave the network. Now that we confirm that DHCP is working in our 10100/24 network, let's move on to setting up a second DHCP pool for the 10200/24 network so those PCs can also receive IP addresses. Now that we've confirmed our DHCP server is running and has started leasing IP addresses, let's go back to our PC and check if it can now detect a DHCP server and automatically obtain an IP address. And there it is, the PC has successfully obtained an IP address from a DHCP server. As you can see, the PC has received an IP from our DHCP server. The subnet mask is correct. The default gateway is set to 10101 our router's interface. Plus, we can see that the DNS server is set to 8844, just as we configure in our DHCP settings. Now that both networks have DHCP configured, it's time to test the connection to make sure all PCs can communicate with each other. Now you might notice that the first packet sometimes fails. That's because of something called ARP or Address Resolution Protocol. Before a device can send data to another, it needs to know the MAC address of the destination device. ARP sends out a request asking who has this IP. The other device responds with its MAC address and then the connection can proceed. As you can see, after that first ARP request, the ping is successful, confirming that our PCs can communicate.
That wraps up our DHCP configuration. We successfully set up a DHCP server on the router, assigned dynamic IPs to PCs in two different networks, and tested network connectivity. Everything is working as expected. If you found this tutorial helpful, be sure to like, subscribe, and drop a comment if you have any questions. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.